<clears throat> Hi guys and welcome back to the Mighty Blues. My name is of course Cameron and welcome back today to another live team. It is Wednesday, we are back to talk about Everton Football Club. Little bits and bobs of news have been uh, circling Twitter and other forms of social media over the last couple of days. Obviously the biggest being Phil Jagielka confirming that he will leave Everton at the end of his contract at the end of this month after 12 fantastic seasons at the Blues. Captaining us for more than six years and competing in over 380 appearances for Everton as well. I think it's fair to say an absolute Everton legend. I think we'd all agree. He's been amazing. He's given us some fantastic moments just off the top of the head. Obviously the goal against Liverpool in the Merseyside derby. Obviously, the FA Cup winning semi-final penalty against Manchester United to take us to the final in 2009 as well. So we're going to talk a little bit about Phil Jagielka in today's team. Not only talking about how good he's been and you know what a legend and what a servant he's been to the football club, but also talking about why he won't be here next season and why talks between him and the club uh, ended up not ending in him signing another contract. We're also going to talk about Leighton Baines, another player that we were all sitting here on Monday saying, well, you know, the, um, the list for the players that are due to be released will be released on Friday so you know we're going to know the futures of Leighton Baines and Phil Jagielka before Friday if not you know obviously on Friday when that list gets released I was saying how I didn't want it to end like a Leon Osman Tony Ibbett situation where the club just sort of released this list on Friday and Jagielkin and Baines are on it and that's it that's all you heard about it obviously we heard about Phil Jagielka's decision yesterday and I dare say we'll hear about Leighton Baines as well within the next couple of days so we're going to talk about Leighton Baines of course a little bit more of a positive topic as he is looking to sign another contract a one year extension on his deal which also ends at the end of this month we're also going to talk about Kurt Zuma and how Jagielka's exit may affect the Kurt Zuma signing and and Andre Gomez as well, a little bit of news that I've literally just read 30 seconds ago about Andre Gomez, which we're going to talk about in today's stream. Get your live comments in if you are in. Alex says, yes, Cam. Yes, Alex, hope you are doing well. Jonathan says, hello, Cam. I hope you are doing well, Jonathan. Hello to you. And Kevin says, hi, Cam. What has happened with Mina? So there's been a rumour. I was going to talk about this, but I was going to leave it to the end of the scene because I don't really believe it. But in terms of Yeti Mina, if you don't know, there's basically been a rumour um, that Yeri Mina is incested or will go out on loan to Colombia or to South some some South American um, team and will go and play there uh, on loan. Or no, Fenerbahce, I think it is that he's been linked with as well as a, a team in South America. So there's been a, a rumor that uh, Yeri Mina will go out there on loan for the 2019 uh, for the 2019-2020 season. Now I personally don't believe this. I don't think we'd loan Yeri Mina out. I don't think we'd sell Yeri Mina out for a number of reasons. One of them just being off the top of the because he's only just signed literally last season and he struggled to get into the team due to injuries struggled to get into the team due to obviously the performances of Keane and uh, Kurt Zuma throughout that season um, and another thing being we've literally just let one centre half go we've just let Phil Jagielka go Kurt Zuma obviously we don't know what's happening with that that's not a guaranteed buy in fact you know it's it's probably 60-40 leaning on that he, he won't sign due to the situation at Chelsea that would literally leave us with just Michael Keane now obviously after the exit of Phil Jagielka, which we'll talk about in a second, I do believe we're looking at another centre half. If it's not Kurt Zuma, I believe it's somebody else. However, even if we brought in another centre half, if we then let Yeri Mina go, we'd still be leaving ourselves with what? Two centre backs? If we don't bring Kurt Zuma in, three if we do, and that's still a little bit risky. So I don't think Yeri Mina will be going anywhere. I think it's just another rumour. Fenerbahce are probably looking into him, probably interested in the player, the type of player he is, the type of centre half he is. But I think Everton are looking in and go, no, it's not the right circumstance. And, you know, he, he's probably going to have quite a big impact on our season next season if he can remain fit. Uh, Alex says, I heard the players' lounge is getting renamed Dixie Normus. <laughs> You, you nearly got me with one of them last time. You're not going to get me with one of them this time. And Shabba says, yeah, I'm going to miss Jags. He was a great player to have around the club. Exactly, exactly. And that's why we're going to talk about him in just a second. Not just the player, not just you know what he gives us in terms of on the pitch, but off the pitch as well. And in the dressing room, he is going to be a really, really big miss to the club. So I'm just going to tweet the steam out before we go into it any further so everybody on Twitter knows we are live if you did see me little video that I put up yesterday just a quick two minute video giving my thoughts and opinions on uh, on the Jagielka situation because he announced it yesterday I got home from work and I done that video I actually said in the video he's played in more than 130 appearances which 
I suppose technically I wasn't wrong. I don't know why I said 130 when I meant to say 380, but I corrected myself in the comments before someone daft on it. So it's actually 380 appearances uh, and obviously being the captain for six years. So he's been an absolutely fantastic, fantastic servant uh, to the football club. And like I said, we'll jump into discussing Jaggy Elka's decision now because, listen... I think I said it on I said it on on a, on a little video yesterday that I'd done in you know the brief four minutes that I spoke. I said we were all sort of sitting here from the end of the season thinking, well, it's it's almost inevitable that Phil Jagielka will leave the football club. Obviously, Marco Silva bringing him on in the last game of the season against Burnley at Goodison Park in like the ninety second minute or the eighty ninth minute, the last dying embers of the game for absolutely no reason we were comfortably winning the game, we'd won the game there was no reason to bring him on tactically the only reason that he brought him on was obviously as we all we all saw in the in the ground was because he was unlikely to sign another deal for the football club, it was fantastic to see, it was amazing to let Phil Jagiel could obviously go out and get the round of applause that he really really does deserve, get the fans chanting his name, obviously uh, a big part to play in the um, the lap of appreciation as well, the fans appreciating Phil as, along with the rest of the squad um, so we were all sort of sitting there after that moment Moment and I think going into obviously the summer and it's been now what three nearly four weeks since the season's ended and we're all sitting there going okay you know we sort of expected Phil Jagielka to not sign another contact however the reason it obviously wasn't announced before the Burnley game or after the Burnley game straight away was because there was still negotiations going on and I think that's really really important to remember is there was obviously talks between Phil Jagielka and the club as to what's going to happen next as to the future um, of him at, at this football club it obviously wasn't spot on clear that he was going to leave the football club because you know it had it, been, been announced before the Burnley game and the club had to come out and said listen Phil Jagielka won't be here next season so when he comes on make sure you give him the round of applause that he deserves that obviously wasn't the case at that time because of the fact that the club was still in negotiations with him I dare say Marco Silva had a little bit of a you know an incline that he wasn't in the plans and that Marcel Brands wasn't really in favour of keeping players on for sentimental value we've seen that with Rain Rooney um, at the start of, of last season of course so I think you know it's really really important like I said to remember that that was uh, a discussion in place there was a discussion for Phil Jagielka to remain at the club or for him to leave the club it wasn't a decision that was made before the Burnley game it was a dis decision that's only been made very very recently and a lot of people I think a lot of Evertonians seen the statement yesterday and they sort of went okay that makes sense he's going to leave the club obviously you know maybe he wants to go and pursue a little bit um, you know end his football career playing more regularly at a, a lower league uh, club or a lower Premier League club um, but I think his statement is quite is quite interesting to read. I'll read the full statement out now. Let me get it up on Twitter. Um, I was going to put it on the side there in a little graphic, but it didn't end up fitting. Um, but a statement's quite quite interesting to to read because it, it kind of screams that him and the club didn't come to a you know a decision to keep him on at the club. That you know them talks didn't end up in in anything that you know would have kept him at the football club. Um, so I'll read it out now. Bear with me just two seconds. He says it's been hard to confirm my decision for next season as that decision hadn't been fully made by the club until now. Unfortunately, my journey at Everton has come to an end after twelve fantastic seasons. I have been lucky enough to play over three hundred and eighty games, and luckily enough. Enough, lucky enough, sorry, to be part of a club. Bear with me two seconds. Let me get it back up. Um, part of a club and captain for six years. All I can say is thanks to all the players I've played alongside. All the staff have helped me in their way. At the chairman and of course the amazing fans. Wishing everybody associated with this special club the very best for the future. Come on, you blues. And then a little seeing, um, a little seeing. Uh, what, what's it called? brackets and a, a blue heart as well so you know quite a quite a nice statement by Phil Jagielka to be honest but as you see in there within the first sentence it said his future hadn't been made clear by the club until now so it's it's the club for me that 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 really reads of turned around to him and read, uh, turned around to him and said listen you're not in the plans for the future and that is absolutely fair enough and I've got no problem with Marcel Brands being cutthroat I've got no problem with Marcel Brands having no time for sentiment <clears throat> And saying, listen, you know, you're a massive part of this football club. You've been a fantastic servant over the years, but realistically, your fifth choice centre back, you're the club captain. Should you really have a club captain that you know has got no chance of getting in the squad? No, we're going to move you on now. And like I said, although I've got no problem with that, it sort of shows the the way that Marcel Brands is going to look to to do his business over the next coming years. Um, listen, like I said, the absolutely 
utmost of respect to Phil Jagielka, like an absolutely fantastic footballer, fantastic servant, giving us some unbelievable memories. And not only that, he's led by example. He might, you know, have always been the most uh, in your face captain, you know, when sometimes we needed that, but it picking players up in referees' faces, getting involved with the opposition. When sometimes you looked and you went, Where are you, Jagielka? Like, why aren't you in the referee's face? But what he absolutely done was led by example. He picked himself up and he showed the players how to play. And you'd even seen that as, you know, as latest as, as this season when he came in against Cardiff, you know, after without that really bad spell of form, he come in against Cardiff and he really, really did show that defence up and he made the defence more, you know, organised and, and more of a unit and then we went on a really, really good run of form then and then obviously he come in against Arsenal and scored the winning goal against Arsenal as well. Really, really nice to see, obviously, that was his last goal at Goodison Park. Um, but like I said, it shows that the club had made that decision, the club had decided that he wasn't to be part of the plans in the future and the money that he was on weekly wasn't enough to say listen you know we're going to keep you on because it was obviously very clear to Marcel Brands that Phil Jagielka was getting paid too much money to be a fifth choice centre half and like I said although I've got no issue with that again it would have been nice for the club to have actually come out and you know understood that and agreed that and would have seen that on a club website or as a club post other than Phil Jagielka basically coming onto Instagram and saying listen the club have made the decision and I won't be here next season it was again quite poor by the club this happens sort of regularly in these types of situations the club you know again the communication between the club the fans and Phil Jagielka himself obviously wasn't quite as it should be Phil Jagielka and the club obviously didn't have that communication as to say listen I'm going to release my statement when are you going to put it on the website because it wasn't actually on the website until about an hour and a half two hours after you know Phil Jagielka released the post and we all sort of knew that where he, uh, where he was going to be at next season and um, but like I said specifically wants to talk about Marcel Brands' role in this situation because we all know how much of a, a fantastic servant Phil Jagielka has been. We all know how unbelievable he's been for our football club. He's had some fantastic centre-back partnerships over the years. Jolien Lescott, Sylvan Distan, of course. Again, like we said, some fantastic memories scoring in the semi-final against Manchester United at Wembley to put us through to the FA Cup final. Scoring against Liverpool, um, again in, in the Merseyside derby in the very last seconds, the best derby goal I have ever seen in my 20 years of existence in a, you know, from a player wearing either colour and that's not even being biased, that is just the truth, that is fact. I was going to say in my opinion but I don't think it is an opinion, I think that's just fact certainly in the last 20 years. Um, but Marcel Brands' role in this is obviously quite pivotal and it's it's sort of a, although it's a, it's a ruthless way of seeing things it's a way of seeing things that we really really need at our club I was watching Toffee TV discuss this uh, yesterday and Baz made a really really good point he said if we're going to be a team that's challenging the top six or maybe even the top four you cannot be a team challenging that and have room for sentiment as well and Marcel Brand's done this last season like I said with Wayne Rooney coming he had a little look at Wayne Rooney he said okay you might be an absolutely fantastic player, being world class in your day. You might be a diehard Evertonian. The fans might have, you know, been absolutely ecstatic to see you join the club last season. But you're on 125 grand a week. Are you going to be worth that? Are you going to play enough games that can justify being paid that much money? No, you're not. So you're going to leave the club. Uh, Wayne Rooney coming out shortly after that decision was made and saying, "Listen, I didn't want to leave the club. That decision was made by the club." Very similar with Jagielka. Marcel Brands sat down with Marco Silva and he said, "Listen, where does Phil Jagielka lie in your plans?" Marco Silva probably said, "Well, realistically, he's behind Michael Keane. He's behind Yeri Mina. If we bring in Kurt Zuman, he's behind him. If we bring in another centre half to replace Jagielka, he's behind him. So fifth, fourth choice centre back at best." And Marcel Brands has gone, "Well, right, he's not worth the money he's on. Then, so we're just going to cut him loose." And I think. Although, on the surface, you think, oh, that's quite sad. It's sad to see Jags go. He's an Everton legend. I just really, really hope now that if we're going to have that sort of ruthless approach and if Marcel Blanz is going to come in and he's going to instill that ruthless approach of, right, you, you, you're getting on, you're too old, you, you know, you, you're not... It, it, it's horrible to say, but you're not worth the money that we're going to be paying you in terms of how many games you're going to play and the effect that you're going to have on the on the club and on the squad itself. If we're going to have that ruthless approach, approach I really, really hope that Jagielka is honoured in some sort of testimonial or you know a, a final game, a final appearance for him before he goes on and makes his, his decision for the future. Because, listen, 
the club made that mistake with Leon Osman and Tony but like we mentioned earlier on two you know club legends in my opinion that just left off uh, off the retained list were just released on the on the last day of the month and that was it then you didn't hear from them uh, ever again in terms of from Everton Football Club so I really really do hope that isn't the case with Phil Jagielka and of course Leighton Baines we'll talk about Leighton Baines in just a second because his situation is a little bit different but I do hope the club come out if not this summer because I understand there's a busy pre-season but at least next summer and say right we're going to give Phil Jagielka the testimonial that he deserves we're going to bring him back and we're going to put him in an Everton kit for one more game you know bring back Sylvan Distan bring back Johnny Eitinger bring back Tim Howard bring back Tim Kale put these lads all in in a game at Goodison Park and have them playing the testimonial because I tell you what Goodison Park would absolutely fucking it'd sell its seats for that game if you sort of said to Evertonian right Phil Jagiel is having a testimonial and all of the players he's played alongside in the last 12 years are going to be involved in it aka you know Ferguson uh, maybe even Arteta Kale etc you'd sell tickets within fucking minutes mate because I'd pay to go and see that I'd pay a lot of money to go and see you know the, the players I've grew up with watching I've grew up with that emotional connection to I'd pay to go and see them play another game in an Everton shirt at Goodison Park and it, why not make that Phil Jagielka's testimonial so I just hope that like I said if we do have that ruthless approach which we seem to have had with not only um Phil Jagielka but with Wayne Rooney again like you said last season I hope we honour at least Phil Jagielka with a little bit more than what we did with Rooney what we did with Osman what we did with Hibby because he, you know, he really really has been fantastic and has been uh, an Everton legend in my opinion let me know your thoughts on that one in the comments section down below let me dive straight back in to the comments Football Blue says hi hi hope you are doing well Jonathan says that we will be daft to get rid of Mina I agree mate Shab says, funnily enough, I'm not too bothered about Yeri because I think he's another Jack Rodwell. He can't play three games on the bounce without breaking an eyelash. Fair enough, but I just think we'd be silly to sell another centre back now. We'd leave ourselves ourselves really, really short, and teams would get onto that. Teams will go, right, well, Everton have only got two centre half now. So if we, let's say we, I don't know, let's say we loaned Mina out for the season to Fenerbahce, and then we said to Chelsea, right, we need Zuma. They could go, well, Everton have only got one centre-back now, so whereas we'd have probably said, yeah, you can have them for 25, 30, now 50, or you're not having them, because they'd know we would we'd be desperate for that position, so I think it'd be silly for the club to do that. LCFC boy says, hi Cam, hi, hope you are doing well. Don says, uh, do you think Gomez will be announced with the new kit? I'd love it mate I really really hope so it's something that I've been thinking about for the last sort of couple of weeks is it wouldn't it be fantastic if the new kit was announced and Andre Gomez was standing there in it but I don't know is that a little bit dreamland I don't know I'd love it but I don't know whether it'd happen and Don says the Jaggy Elka pen was my first game absolutely unbelievable game to witness unbelievable game I was at the final which unfortunately we didn't win but I remember watching the semi-final on the telly as a, as a young child and it was absolutely unbelievable Anyway, before we move on and talk about Leighton Baines, I just want to talk about a couple of more things in terms of the Jaggy Elka situation. So, of course, like we said, probably the right decision to not renew his contact. He wasn't going to play a lot of games. He'd have been on a lot of money. Um, and Marcel Blanz has obviously made that decision as to that, you know, the money that he was earning wasn't going to be sufficient as to the game time that he played. Same with uh, Wayne Rooney and, you know, maybe the same with a couple of players in the near future as well. I think... It's important that when you look at Phil Jagielka, somebody made a really, really good point in the comment section below. It was Shabba. You don't just think, okay, we're we're you know we're letting go of a centre back that has given us his best years. Probably isn't going to play an awful lot of games next season. Has suffered with injuries even when he hasn't played. So you know, fair enough. It makes sense, and it does make sense. But like Shabba says, you really, really do have to look at the personality that Phil Jagielka was, how he was around the dressing room, how respected he was at the football club. You are going to be losing a massive, massive of part of the football club you think as Everton as a body I'd like to think as Phil Jagielka as, as I don't know the right arm or the left leg or, or you know even the art you're missing a, a massive massive part of that key structure and we really 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 need somebody to step up now and be that personality in the dressing room whether that's Seamus Coleman because he's likely to get the club captaincy obviously he's already basically the team captain because he's the the one of the three that plays the most games and um, but he's probably now going to step up and take the club captaincy. Um, we need somebody to step up and perform as Jaggy has performed over the years, not on the pitch, but off the pitch. He's obviously been a massive, massive impact in the dressing room, not only to players that are still at Everton Football Club or have been at Everton Football Club for a matter of years, but of course on the new signings as well. And like you said, Phil Jaggy might have only played 
two or three games last season. He might have played against Wolves and been sent off, scored against Arsenal, played against Cardiff, but I can guarantee he's been there at Finch Farm every step of the way, dragging them players, players through the hard times, being there to put an arm around the young players, giving them advice. So we're going to be missing a massive, massive element of a player that not only on the pitch give us a whole all, but off the pitch give us all as well. And I really, really do hope that Phil Trigelka will come back in some capacity in the near future, whether it's a coaching role, whether it's a managerial role, if he goes into that, or whether it's an ambassador role, I really, really do hope that he comes back in some sort of capacity. And that's why I hope the club make sure that, you know, if he is leaving, well, he is leaving when he leaves, he leaves in sort of a, a dignified manner, manner and the club really, really make an effort to go out and show, listen, this is how much we appreciate you by giving you the testimonial, by giving you, you know, your day. And this is how much the fans appreciate you by coming and by supporting and by showing how much they've appreciated everything you've done in an Everton shirt. So we really, really will be missing a massive, massive personality around the club. We'll be missing that player that Phil Jagielka was. But it's football, it's a business at the end of the day and you, you do have to move on. There, there really is no room for sentiment if you're going to be cutthroat and you're going to be looking at, you know, um, challenging the top six or maybe even challenging the top four in the next couple of years. So it's massively, massively important that, like I said, somebody steps up now and somebody is that club captain. We all look and we all go, well, okay, Jags wasn't really the, the team captain throughout last season because he didn't play, but he was certainly the club captain. He was there in Finch Farm and I, I dare say he was the, the player that everybody looked up to and went, well, that, that's like, you know, he, he's the captain, he's the boss around here other than Marco Silva so somebody really really needs to step up but they say it'll be Seamus Coleman let's hope that he does uh, Jack says thoughts on the possibility or the rate of getting Rabiot and Munier on a free fucking hell mate if we get Rabiot and Munier on a free I'd, I'd absolutely love it to be honest two really really good players two players that have played obviously Champions League football Rabiot uh, experienced in the Champions League like you said it is it is um, rare and it's probably unlikely but Again, if we sign them players, it's 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 a statement by Marcel Brandt. It's a statement of him bringing in players that have played at that high level. It's to say, well, right, right, this is where we want to be, and this is where we are going to be by bringing in these players. Nobody expects us to go out and sign a Lacazette or an Mbappe, but if we can bring in players that have played at that Champions League level before then, you know, obviously that's naturally going to give us that push to challenge for the top six, to challenge for the top four. So I'd absolutely love it, although I'm not too sure there's there's a high possibility of it happening. But anyway, we've spoken about one Everton legend from one Everton legend to another. We'll go on to talking about Leighton Baines. And we spoke about Leighton Baines on Monday night. We spoke about the fact that he's been offered a one-year extension by the club. However, he is still on a family holiday in Los Angeles and he is still yet to decide. Now, I said on... Um, on Monday night, that that could be a numerous amount of things. That could be Leighton Baines saying, well, I'm, I'm thinking about my career. I want to go and play, f- play regular football. I'm not going to play regular football at Everton because you've got Luca Dini, who's absolutely fantastic, who's going to play week in, week out. Uh, it could be Leighton Baines sitting here thinking, listen, I'm, I'm out in LA to talk to other clubs. I want to talk to LA Galaxy. We know how much he loves Los Angeles. I want to, you know, I want to go and play the, the remainder of my career out in a, in a club in a hot country, such as America. Or... And like we said uh, on Monday night, it could very much just be Leighton Baines saying, listen, <clears throat> I've just been part of, OK, he hasn't played an awful lot of games, but I've just been part of a 10-month Premier League campaign in which has seen us have ups and downs and him personally have ups and downs in terms of injuries. I'm on holiday with my family. I ain't making no decision, mate. And we all done it. We have, what you have to do is, although it's really, really tough because football isn't, isn't a regular job, it isn't a regular business, you, you can't, it's not a nine-to-five job. You can't, there's very... There's very, very rare occasions where you can put yourself in a footballer's boot and go, well, to be honest, if I was in work, I'd probably do that because I'm not getting paid 100 grand a week to go and kick a ball about for 90 minutes and, you know, have a little bit of a laugh at Finch Farm. But this was a situation where I, I really did see myself putting myself in Leighton Baines' boots and I think a lot of fans can, can agree is he is probably, if you were on holiday, let's say you, you were on holiday for a couple of weeks with your family from work, knowing full well, obviously, that you'd only get certain amount of holiday time a year obviously footballers will naturally have days off out of a luxury when when other people don't but if you were on holiday and somebody phoned you up and said here here's a work decision blah blah i know full well i'd say as soon as the, the word work was mentioned i'd say i see you later mate i'm on holiday and put it down so Leighton baines you know very well could have just said i'm not making any decision i'm not even thinking about football i'm on my holiday he's played a lot of a lot of a lot of a lot of games for Everton Football Club. He's been here for, again, 12 seasons, exactly the same as Phil Jagielka. He's played 
unbelievable throughout the, the majority of those 12 seasons he's probably a little bit bored of football after such a long career so he's probably sitting there in LA with his family thinking before I make any decision I'm just going to enjoy my you know my time with my family I'm going to enjoy my chilling time oh, I've only just come out of a, a, a 10 month season I haven't battled through my own personal injuries I ain't making any decision yet I'm not even entertaining a conversation because I'd do that with work you know, as much as, you know, I may like my job, as much as anybody else may love their job, if you were sitting on holiday in, in a beach somewhere and you were enjoying your time with your family and someone picked up the phone and said, yeah, I need you to make this work decision, you'd probably say, yeah, do us a favour and piss off, mate, I'll make it when I get back home. So, like I said, that very much could have been the case with Leighton Baines. It's now um, uh, being rumoured by Sky Sports News that they're ever and expect Leighton Baines to sign that one-year extension. So, obviously... Very similar situation to Phil Jagielka. Leighton Baines' contract expires at the end of this month, so if he doesn't sign an extension, again, like Phil Jagielka, he will leave the club on a free. It was uh, announced, well, it wasn't announced, it was rumoured last week that he has been offered uh, an extension however he still hasn't made the decision that's when you know we started to come up with the possibilities of well maybe he wants to go and play a little bit more game time elsewhere maybe he doesn't want to make the decision yet maybe uh, as he come out himself and said he wants to speak to his family and see where their heads are all at um it seems now that he's obviously had some sort of conversation with someone at Everton or Everton have had some sort of conversation with his team and he is expected to sign that deal upon returning from his holiday in a couple of weeks time um, and you know what <clears throat> I think it's absolutely fantastic news. Listen, I think it, it, we spoke about it a couple of weeks ago when we were speaking about the season review and we were speaking about the season in itself. The Leighton Bain situation is a little bit different to the Phil Jagielka situation. Phil Jagielka might be the fourth, fifth centre-half choice for Marco Silva going into next season. Leighton Baines is the number two and a number two that could step in and perform in that role. Obviously, we know we've got Luca Dean there who come in last season, absolutely lit it up, won every single award under the sun, has been absolutely unbelievable. He is the number one left back. But I think we would all have the confidence if Luca Dean for somehow, you know, touch what he doesn't, but let's say he got injured throughout the course of next season, let's say that he got suspended throughout the course of next season, we would all have the confidence that if Leighton Baines was fit, he could step in and do a job. Because we know he can. We know Leighton Baines has still got the quality. We know he's still got the class. We know he's still got the ability. It's just the case of the the fitness levels for Leighton Baines and him struggling through injuries. So we know he can't play 38 games a season. He could play it at a lower level. At a, you know, a team lower than us in the Premier League or maybe even a team in, in a different country but he couldn't play 38 games of football a season for Everton Football Club but that's why Luca Dean is there and nobody is asking him to play 38 games they're asking him do you want to be the backup left back for Everton Football Club and I dare say that's where his decision is being made and Marcel Brands for me doesn't strike me as the type of player to sit down and try and beat around the bush Marcel Brands for me strikes me as the type of player that will have sat down next to Leighton Baines and said listen this is it mate you're going to be the backup left back you're going to play Depending on how many times Luca Dean is out, depending on how many times Luca Dean needs a rest, you're going to play, I don't know, maximum 10 games a season if we go far in the cut runs. Do you want it or do you not want it? And that's where Leighton Baines has probably sat back and gone, well, I need to have a little think about this. But Sky Sports does understand that he is expected to sign that deal. So I dare say he's probably stepped back and gone, well, I need to have a think. And then he's probably gone, well, yeah, actually, I do want to sign. And for me, it's absolutely fantastic news. Obviously, nothing's been confirmed yet. I dare say we'll have that confirmed before now and Friday's stream. So don't forget to keep in touch with the channel, of course. If it's if it's confirmed today after the stream, I'll have a little video up. If it's confirmed tomorrow, I'll have a little video up. If it's confirmed Friday, we'll speak about it on the live team but like I said it's it's fantastic news it's a little bit of a different situation for Leighton Baines than Phil Jagielka he is obviously naturally going to get more game time than Jags would have he's in a higher position in terms of playing um, in terms of the playing squad than Phil Jagielka was so it's you know it's, it's really really good that he's hopefully will come out and sign that contact plus it saves us going and buying a backup left back as well that would need in case Luca Dean does you know pick up an injury throughout the course of next season or get suspended so let's hope that Leighton does sign that contact um, obviously will be really really positive news for for not just himself but the club as well um where are we good so it says what strikers do you think silver sash brands will be looking at cam i think they'll be looking at a lot of strikers a lot of premier league strikers i think they'll probably be looking at the, the players that we've been linked with maybe your welbecks maybe your mitzvic i don't think we'll ever sign those players but i do naturally think we'll be looking at a lot of players i think we'll be looking at players from south america as well because brands is familiar with that market and all the other leagues around europe as well it's really really difficult to pick a name out the bag in terms of we're looking at him um gene kevin augustine 
from Leipzig, I think, is probably the the one that you could pick a name out and go, right, OK, Marcel Brands and Marco Silva are looking at him because, you know, that was rumoured in January as well. So there's a name, but I dare say we're looking at a plethora of different strikers. Josh Taylor says, who do you think we will sign? Um, ooh, it's a tough one. I think we'll sign Andre Gomez. I also am increasingly being more confident about Kei Tuma, who we'll talk about in a second. I think we'll sign Kei Tuma. Um, I also... I don't know. It's hard to say. I'd love us to sign David Neres. I'd love us to maybe bring in another another centre midfielder. Maybe even a centre back now that Jags has gone. But as well as Zuma, of course. But again, it's really, really tough to, to say at the minute. Ray Parr says, Would you take Martina back personally? I thought he was quite good. No, I wouldn't. He'd be getting sent, uh, sold or released or whatever we have to do. I just personally don't think he's good enough. But fair's fair. Andrew says, Is Gomez a done deal, mate? It's not a done deal yet in terms of. Physically, obviously, it's not been announced. It's not a done deal, but I dare say, you know, it it's looking like it's going to be completed. Uh, the player seems to want the move. Barcelona seems to want to sell him. So it's just about Everton and Barcelona coming to an agreement now, which, again, we all know is is, is as much as a done deal as it's not as it is a non done deal, isn't it? Let's be honest. It's as much as a he's playing at Everton next season as it is he's playing at somewhere else next season. Knowing Everton's negotiation process. So anyway, we'll talk about Andre Gomez in just a, a minute in a little bit after we've spoken about Kurt Zuma. And Andrew says Sebastian Heller needs uh, to be looking at him. He is quality. Was playing great against Chelsea. Yes, another player I believe playing in the German league. Another player that Marcel Brands probably have his eye on. Probably be looking at going into next season. So again, he is probably a player that we you know will be looking at at least to to you know to to scout or inquire about so again let's hope that that marcel and marco are looking at him as well so anyway let's talk about kate zuma let's talk about kate kate zuma of course we know two players that played for everton last season two players that now are not everton players kate zuma and andre gomez we know about the andre gomez stuff again like i said we'll talk about him in a second because there's been some more news that has been announced over the last uh, couple of hours and um, but kate zuma himself uh, a player that we all sort of sat here at the end of the season and we all sort of said, as much as we'd love to sign Kertuma, as much as we think he'd be an absolutely fantastic signing, it it's going to be difficult. It's going to be difficult on a number of, uh, of different reasons. One is because of Chelsea's transfer ban for the start, meaning that they can't bring any players in. They can, of course, sell players, but you know the season that Kertuma had last season... The fact that Chelsea are likely to lose a manager as well. The fact that Chelsea's centre-back partnership is changing constantly. It's going to be increasingly difficult to to approach them and to have them say, yes, OK, we'll sell Kertzuma. If they didn't have a transfer ban, I fully expect Kertzuma to be an Everton player by now because I think they'd say, yeah, OK, we'll sell him, give us 35 million, 40 million for him, or go out and buy someone else who's better. But obviously they cannot do that. The player himself as well, if he's approached and told by Chelsea, listen, you are going to be a big part of our... our um, uh, our run next season because you know we've seen how well you've done at Everton and we're really really impressed the player himself might turn around and go well okay I'll be playing Champions League football I'll likely be challenging for the title I'll have a new manager it'll be like a fresh start there's a lot of different things at the moment that stand in the way of a deal for Kertzuma however there's a little little glimmer of hope that I seen last night or that I seen yesterday that I thought well you know what maybe we have got a real real possibility of bringing Kertzuma in and that was obviously the exit of Phil Jagiel okay, now I tweeted this out last night Phil Jagiel can leave in Everton at the end of this month doesn't guarantee Kurt Zuma is going to sign. It doesn't even say, right, he's left because Kurt's coming in. It doesn't say that whatsoever. What that says is Phil Jagiel is leaving because his contact's up and the club have made the decision that, to, that you know, we, we, we won't be keeping him on. However, it does say that we now need another centre-back. It does say that we are now one less centre-half. We've got Yeri Mina, who struggled with injuries throughout the season last season and didn't really find his feet, didn't get any consistency. And we've got Michael Keane, who, of course, was fantastic. So it's pretty much guaranteed that we at least now need one. But we do. We need one centre-half now, if not two. Now, it tells me the decision to obviously move Jack Elkin on tells me that the club are looking at another centre-back. Whether it's Kurt Zuman or not, we don't know. But it's still exciting because we know that the club are looking at centre-backs to bring in. And I would assume that the club are, you know, pretty close to agreeing a deal for a centre-back. Like I said, whether that's Kurt Zuman or not, we'll have to wait and see. Because the decision to to, uh, to uh, not renew Phil Jack Elkin's contact was made. I don't think Marcel Brands would be stupid enough to make that decision without having somebody in mind to bring in or without a discussion being made to a, to a, another centre-back because I think, you know, it'd be absolutely silly if Marcel Blanc just said, right, Jack, you go and then go, right, well, we need another centre-back now because, like I said earlier on, clubs are going to realise that we're stuck now for centre-backs. Clubs are going to realise that 
we really, really need a centre back, so they're going to up the prices because they're going to know we're desperate. So it wouldn't make much sense for Marcel Brands to have not had somebody at least in his eye line to bring in to be that replacement to Phil Jagielka. Now we can only hope as a fan base that it, it is Kurt Zuma. We can only hope that the the club have had conversations with Chelsea and Chelsea have agreed to sell him at a, a certain price or under certain circumstances. Whether them circumstances are he comes back on loan for another season and then we make the deal permanent next season, whether those circumstances are we we buy him but just for the higher price than uh, originally rumored. I don't know, but like I said, it, the decision to end Phil Jagielka's contact, pretty well not end his contact, but to not give him a, a, an extension on his contact, pretty much guarantees that we need a centre back now. If we'd have kept Phil Jagielka on, you could have said, well, okay, we've got Jags, Keane, and Mina. It's disappointing, it's not ideal, but if we started the season with that, you'd be thinking, okay, I'm a bit furious because we didn't bring Zoom in and on another centre back, but we've got three centre backs there, I suppose, whereas now it's unacceptable we need to bring in another centre half so we can only hope that Zuma is that player that you know the the club are, are looking at and the club have you know decided to make that move for it mightn't be it might be somebody completely different it might be you know delete who knows possible I'm only messing uh, it might be somebody completely different but let's hope that you know it is Kurt Zuma and again like I said that was that little shine and beacon that I thought well does this open the door now for Kurt Zuma? Does this mean Marcel Blanz has got his eye on another centre-back? And if it's not Zuma, who is it? How exciting is that player? Who's going to come in? And are they going to be able to play in the Premier League next season? Are they going to be a solid and create a, a good partnership as Michael Keane and Kurt Zuma did last season? So anyway, let me know your thoughts on that one in the comments. If you're not enjoying this team so far, please, please do leave a like. It really, really does mean a massive, massive amount to me. Let me know all your thoughts on everything that was spoke about so far in the comment section down below. If you're watching live, leave them in the live comments. If you're watching the YouTube video, afterwards leave them in the youtube comments if you haven't already as well please please do subscribe i think we're nine subscribers away from 500 now so it'd mean a massive massive amount to me if you could subscribe and um, where are we ray Parr says i would start pennington next season uh, I think he's got a lot of potential. Obviously, he scored in the Merseyside derby, um, but I still think he needs a little bit more experience, to be honest. I don't think he's Premier League level yet, in my opinion, at least. Andrew says, hope we can sign Zuma. He was fantastic alongside Michael Keane. I agree, spot on. And Good Soul says, do you think it was a blessing that we didn't make Europe? I think Wolves will suffer with their season starting in July. Um, yeah, I do. You know, looking back on it and looking at it logically, I do. Listen, I wanted European football. There's nothing that... Uh, that I love more than going away to watch Everton Football Club, watching us in mad different countries, even watching us at Goodison Park under the lights in a European competition against mad different mad different teams. There's nothing better than that. Um, but looking back on it logically and sitting here, you know, at the end of the season, it probably was a little bit of a blessing in disguise, I'd say. I, I agree with you. I do think Wolves will massively, massively struggle. I predicted, and again, I'm not the best with predictions, to be honest. I predicted on the first day of the season that they wouldn't finish in the top 10, but I actually predicted that they'd get relegated Wolves, but, you know, we won't talk about that. But I predicted that with the European campaign and the effect that that naturally does have on a lot of teams, we've seen the effect that it had on Burnley, I do predict that Wolves will struggle next season. Uh, I'm not going to say a place because it bollocks me up last season, but I do think they will struggle, uh, whereas it gives us now the opportunity to really push on now. I'm not... Getting in the Europa League because we've finished 7th or not getting in the Europa League because somebody hasn't or somebody has won a cup competition, but get into it by finishing 6th or maybe even 5th. Like I said, pushing for that top 6th, pushing for that top 4. And I think, like I said, having European football next season, starting our season in July, having to mess up that schedule, it, it wouldn't have been the best thing for us. Whereas now we can get our heads down, we can have a good pre-season. Marco Silva and Marcel Brands have had plenty of time to plan it. And then obviously we can go into next season. Hopefully we can push on now and really, really push. To, to that top six place and finish in a European place next season having deserved to finish there in the league and having been the best of the rest I really really do think we can finish in that top six um, next season even I'd go as far as to say push the top four if we make the right business in the summer and that's in terms of uh, incomings and outgoings as well um, Jeff says you grow on a tash uh, grow a beard you would look like Ped's son uh, I'm I, do you know what it is? I'm not really growing one. It's just that I go on holiday soon and I can't be bothered shaving. I want to leave it until like the day before I go on holiday and then shave. So I don't have to shave when I'm on holiday, basically. Um, but I, I wish I could grow a beard. If I could grow a beard, I'd have a beard, mate. But I really, really can't. It's just, it's just like bum fluff on my face. That's all it is. But yeah, I probably do need to shave, to be honest. Andrew says, Mason Allgate, would, would you have him back if we didn't sign Zuma permanently? I think Mason will come back anyway, regardless whether we sign Zuma. Um, and again... He's another player that 
he's another player that will probably be considered as centre back cover. Maybe a player that you know Marcel Brands and Marcus Silver have had in their eye when Phil Jagielka's contract obviously wasn't extended. Maybe that he was the player that they thought was going to come in and take that place as the you know third, fourth, three centre half. However, I, I you know I'd have Mason Holgate back anyway, but I still think we we should be pursuing the Kurt Zuma deal. Although again, like I said, I still think that's 60-40 in not signing for Everton just because of the situation at Chelsea. Ray Parr says top six next season. I think so, mate. If we do the right business in the summer in terms of players coming in and players going out i really really do think so jeff says we can i agree andrew says thought uh, though he's coming back from loan at west brom of course of course he will be and good soul says i agree with the comments on europe would like to be there if we are in the top six and no early start exactly if we were going straight into the the group comp the group stages then yeah obviously you love it but realistically start playing football in july and having your pre-season interrupted by competitive games in you know mad countries across europe it's not really the stage that we are at, at the minute we our club isn't we're at the very much at the rebuilding stage and that i think would just cock everything up and would just throw a mad Massive, massive spanner in the works, as the saying goes. So anyway, before we end the scene, we want to talk about Andre Gomez. If you're not enjoying so far, please do leave a like. It really, really does mean a massive amount to me. And subscribe as well, if you haven't already. So before we end, like I said, I want to talk about Andre Gomez. Andre Gomez, listen, we all want Andre Gomez to sign, don't we? We all think that, you know, he was absolutely fantastic last season. And every, I think most Evertonians want him to to sign the contract, wanting to sign on a permanent deal. Now, of course, there's been rumours over the last couple of uh, couple of days, couple of weeks uh, of Andre Gomez being linked with moves to Spurs, being linked with moves to West Ham. Spurs, obviously, were, were rumoured to be involved. I've now rumoured to have ended their incest. Again, I'm a little bit dubious about that one. I really do think that was just Barcelona trying to up his price. I really, really do think that was Barcelona just trying to say, well, you know, Spurs are interested, so you'll have to pay a bit more when realistically... I'd he probably weren't. Uh, and West Ham, of course, having, having a bid of £18 million uh, rejected by Barcelona formally for Andre Gomez, and then another apparent bid of £20 million being put in, despite Barcelona saying they want £25 million for him. Listen, the positive news to come out of it is Andre Gomez, we spoke about on Monday, Andre Gomez had spoken to his friends and family and said that Everton is his preferred destination. He wants to go to Everton if the two uh, clubs can strike a deal. It's now being um, rumoured today that Andre Gomez has informed West Ham that he doesn't want to join them, that he wants to sign for Everton. A little bit of a laugh in the, the faces of all those West Ham fans that were pretty much, you know, really confident that he was going to sign for them. He apparently has come out and said to them, listen, I don't want to sign for you. I want to sign for Everton. Everton is the destination I want to be at. So for me, listen, that tells us that the player wants to move. Barcelona wants to sell him. It's just now about Everton forking up the money. And if I was Everton Football Club, and like I've said numerous times before, I don't think there's anybody from Everton watching these teams. But if there is... Just pay the fucking money. Give them 30, give them 32, give them £32.50, give them 30 million in a Mars bar, give them whatever they want for Andre Gomez. Just go bang, there you go, cheers. Get the deal done as soon as possible. Let's get him in, let's get him on a contract, let's get him in the new kit with his boss haircut, with his belt and beard, and let's go right there you are, you're on the shelf for next season. You'll be in next season. You'll be starting every week. Let's just get that deal done. Let's not fuck about with negotiations. Let's not fuck about with anything else. Let's just get that deal done. Um, and hopefully we can get it done as soon as possible as well. The player clearly wants to move. Barcelona want to sell the player. So let's just pay the money. We obviously want the player. Let's not beat around the bush. I know Marcel Brands is very, very strict on paying too much for the player or, you know, only paying enough, if not getting a really, really good deal for a player, but let you know, we've seen how well he can play. We've seen that he can play in the Premier League. We've seen that, you know, he's fitted to this league. So let's just pay the money, in my opinion. Anyway, let me know your thoughts on that one, of course, in the live comments. Before we leave, I'm gonna dive back into the comments and um, to see what everybody is saying. Andrew says, What strikers uh, would you like? Uh, again, like I said, I, I just want a, a goal scorer, a goal scorer, someone that comes in and scores 15, 20 goals a season and that, you know, can be there and, uh, and be that attacking threat that we desperately need. Jeff says, finishing the top six will be progress, but it's going to be very hard. Need a top striker is a must. I agree. Spot on. Andrew says, who you like the look of? I love the look of Timo Werner, but I don't think we're going to sign him. Andrew says, Paul Joyce has tweeted about Gomez, so it's definitely happening. Hopefully, fingers crossed. And Andrew says, he's apparently rejected West Ham, who also wants them. Yeah, like we said, he's He's apparently turned around to West Ham and said he's got no interest in signing for them, which is a bit of a laugh for all those West Ham fans that seem to think they're a bigger club than Everton. And Good Soul said 25 to 30 million is a sniff for a player like Gomez in today's market. I agree. Spot on, mate. I agree 100%. Let's just pay the money, get it done, get it over with, and, you know, get him signed. Let's just get him signed. Jeff says, I agree, Cam, but you know what, Everton are like, mm, 
they will mess uh, Gomez's deal up as normal. Yeah, you know, we do tend to piss him out with money, don't we? But let's just hope that Marcel just, you know, swallows his throat with this one. And even if he has to pay a little bit more money than he would like to, just do it. Just get the deal done. The fans want him. The player wants to join him. The club clearly want him. We know he can do it in this league. We know how good he can be. So let's just get the deal done. Ray says, can you say hi to Sally Menza, Festy Bear, Young Law and Christopher from Zimbabwe? Thanks, Cam. Thanks to all of those. Uh, and on that note, on that bombshell, I'm going to end today's stream. If you have enjoyed, please, please do leave a like. It really, really does mean a massive, massive amount to me. If you haven't already, please do subscribe. We're so, so close to 500 subscribers now, so it would mean a massive, massive amount to me if you could hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to join us on Friday at quarter past six for another live stream. We're going to be talking about Marcel Brands and Marco Silva and how they need to approach this summer in terms of bringing players in and selling players as well, uh, and obviously leading into next season. If you're watching the YouTube video, leave all your thoughts in the comment section down below. I'll be reading and replying to those all night, and thank you to everybody watching live as well and getting involved as per usual. Andrew says, Adrian Rabiot, what do you think of him? I think he's a fantastic player. He would massively improve Everton, um, and if we signed him, that would be unbelievable. However, I think it's 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 unlikely at the minute. And Jeff says, great pick. Take care, Cam. Thank you very much, Jeff, and everybody else as well for getting involved today. But anyway, that's going to do it for me. Thank you very much to everybody for watching. Uh, good soul says, nice one again, Cam. Nice one, good soul. Thank you for getting involved as per usual, as everybody else as well. Don't forget to join us at quarter past six on Friday for another live stream. Makes out to be a really, really good one. Shabba says, see you, Cam. Another great team. Thank you, Shabba. Thank you very much. And thanks to everybody for all of their support as well. It really, really does mean a massive, massive amount to me. It really, really does. Anyway, if you have enjoyed, please, please do leave a like, subscribe if you are new. Uh, and I'll see you on Friday for another live team. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you soon on the Mighty Blues.